Welcome, everybody, to episode 136 of Disney with the Ducks. Tonight, you've got me, John Crawl, and I'm joined by my friend Gene. Howdy. And my friend Jody. Hi, friends. And our friend Lonnie will be joining us shortly. Um, okay, so uh, first thing is first, we want to ask you to all please go out and give us a five-star review on your podcatcher of choice and write us a review and then uh, share the episode with one of your friends that loves Disney. And then lastly, I know we're giving you a lot of action items here. You probably want to pause to write these all down so we can check them off. But uh, <laughs> the last thing we want you to do then is go over to the Disney with the Ducks Facebook page uh, or Facebook group and join that and come just have some fun. Uh, share pictures of you and your family on trips <laughs> or talk about your favorite Disney movie um anything i mean even disney adjacent you know so uh come on over there and, and join our community over there um all right so tonight we're gonna ask a question like we do every week uh helps us get to know each other a little better lets our listeners get a sneak peek behind the curtain of our lives so um tonight we're gonna ask what is your coffee order gene how are you taking your coffee these days yeah, so um, one of two choices, if I'm going to like a diner or something like that where I'm going to sit down and eat breakfast, I'm going to get just regular drip coffee with two creams and, you know, two Splendas or something like that. Depends on how strong and bitter it is. Maybe a little bit more cream, just depends. If I'm going to like a Starbucks or, you know, uh, Dunkin' Donuts or, you know, something like that uh, in, in Arkansas and Alabama, I go to a place called Seven Brew. I'm getting some kind of mocha, you know, because I'm feeling fancy, you know. I'm going through a drive-thru or something like that. Okay. Be pretty easy. Yeah. Jim has been right. really into this thing called the Cincinnati Mocha lately, which is a coffee with um, mocha, but then it has cinnamon in it. Oh. Oh, like Mex cinnamon. Mexican coffee. Mexican yeah. Um, yeah. chocolate has. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's good. Huh. That does <laughs> sound really good. Okay. Jody. well, what's your coffee order, though, right now? Um, I am the boring person in my house and I brew just normal, regular coffee. And I add just a tiny, tiny splash of nonfat milk. Can't stand the half and half or cream. I don't want to, I like just plain normal splash of nonfat milk. And, um, I'm the boring one. Now, every once in a while, I'll treat, you know, gotta treat yourself every blue moon. Right. So I do, um, I do like the fall season. So lately I've been ordering one or two of the pumpkin spice cold brews so it's still more oh. coffee flavored than pumpkin-y but it's got just a little little hint of a pumpkin so oh okay so yeah i'll say i at home i pretty much just put a little splash of like a non-dairy vanilla creamer in there and that's that's about it but when i go to starbucks i um get a dirty dirty skinny chai so it's a chai latte with um like non-fat or uh, skim milk, something like that. And then with an extra shot of espresso. So I didn't know that I was ordering it one day and mm -hmm. the teenager behind the counter was like, Oh, you want a dirty skinny chai? And I'm like, I don't know if I should be talking to you about this. <laughs> um, so I found out that's what it was called though. So now that's a lot of times how I order it. Uh, and then I also feel very, very weird. When I say that out loud, John, John, I was in San Diego a couple of weeks ago and a guy in front of me ordered a, not skinny, but a dirty chai. And he got it and the guy brought it to him and there was a little bit left over. And I said, what is that to, you know, to the barista? And he said, oh, it's dirty chai. Look, you, you have it. And the guy getting the coffee said, hey, dr taste it. And he gave me the little bit of leftover, you know, that he get brought in another cup. Yeah. And I tasted it. And I said, ah, you know, I'll have one of those. Why not? And it's one of those things, John, that I'm glad you like it. And I'm not disparaging you for it. But first of all, the thought of tea and coffee together. I mean, that's I know. just, it seems yeah. like, there's something satanic maybe about that. I don't know. I don't, I'm not, you know, I don't know, but I tried it, right. I'm trying to be a good sport and I got yeah. through it, but I said, you know, I'm glad I did that, but it's one of those, I don't have to do it again. I'm good. Okay. But, but I respect your, your tea, coffee, whatever choice. I respect He's it. like, I was dirty, but now I'm clean. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> right. But no, it's just, it's so delicious. <laughs> oh, I love chai tea. I love coffee. You put them together. Oh man. Whew. Two Tell great tastes that taste great together. But to Jody's point, I also like right now, this time of year, I'm very into fall. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to get a pumpkin spice latte a lot of times, but I yeah, like you one, are. one less pump of the pumpkin flavor and one extra shot of espresso. Cause I, I want as much caffeine getting in me as possible. Basically <laughs> is, is the moral story there. Some, you um, want some very caffeine. You're so basic. 
Yeah, well, you know, I just I need that caffeine because I'm arriving at Walt Disney World Resort and I need to figure out what I'm doing on my first day there. You know, what what do we do on arrival day to Disney? We've been driving some of us all day. You pull up to your resort. Some of us have been on flights all over the country with connections and stuff. So when we finally get to our resort, what are we going to do? And that's what we're going to talk about today. So. What do you guys like to do? Like first thing, you get your room assigned. What what are you doing? We're talking. You are not talking. Okay, I'm going to take an Uber. No, we're past that. We're at Walt Disney World. Jody, you sound I'm gonna get like my room like take a nap probably. Yeah, are you really? Because I no, I'm, I'm not. I'm just joking. Cool. I just want to see y'all's reaction. Of course not. You're at Disney. You guys time to go do something. Yeah. No, that's why I don't like to even sleep when I'm at Disney. I find it mm-hmm. wasteful. <laughs> yeah. I need. Mean, I don't know. I just need a stream of Red Bulls. Um, but no, like, okay. So Gene, you're going to take a, take a little snooze, get you, get you re-energized for the day. Um, sometimes we have to, especially those of us with little kids. But um, I mean, sure. to, to me, honestly, like if we're not in a park, right? If our room's already ready when we get there, I'll have everything kind of unpacked and organized a little bit. That'll set us up for success the next couple of days when we're going to the parks. But then, you know, it's like you, you want to just relax for a little bit. Everybody's been in the car. Everybody's cooped up. You're probably, you want to get more than three feet away from the rest of the family members. Um, So I just want to take that first hour and just kind of relax and hang out, let the kids look at their phones or iPads and I'll start, you know, unpacking stuff and kind of putting things away. I think what you said there is really key though, about, um, you know, getting there and having your room ready. That very rarely happens to us because we often take the first flight down. So if we're landing at, you know, nine or 10 in the morning and our room's almost never ready at that, at that hour. Right. So we're typically going to the resort, meeting the bellhop, dropping off our luggage, and then taking off someplace. Um, so if it's a typical family vacation, we're most likely hitting a park right away. Um, because like I said, we're, we typically will land by nine o'clock or something in the morning. So we're, we've got almost an entire full day. Uh, if it's a race weekend, that's a whole different story because that's pack a pickup and this and that and all the chaos. So, um, it just kind of depends on, on what type of, what type of day, but most of the time, like I said, we we get there early, we drop off our luggage and we're going to go enjoy, enjoy the day doing something. Now I will say 2025 is, um, throws an interesting, scenario and does anyone know what's included in packages and in, tw- in resort stays in 2025 yeah a uh, ticket to the water park ticket to the water park so mm-hmm. that is something i've never done i've i've run through i think we all have run through blizzard beach um the parking lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah never but been inside been inside Blizzard Beach or Typhoon Lagoon. So yeah. maybe that would be something I would choose to do now on my check-in day. Because if you're buying a, as an annual pass member, it's a little bit different going into a park is no big deal. But if, if I was buying a theme park ticket for that day, and if I don't arrive to Disney till, you know, 11 or 12, I may not want to spend the I don't know, 160, 180, whatever it is to get into the theme park for the day. But if I've got a free ticket to one of the water parks, then I may go check it out. So, and then be soggy in the lobby until the room's ready. And and that's a really good point though, about like going to parks on your day when you get there. Personally for me, I don't like going to parks the day I get there, unless if I had an annual pass, I would go maybe for just the fireworks. That's what we we used to do. But I just think it's it's too much for me to do like the drive because we pretty much always drive and then go to a park that day. Um, So we like to go maybe to even Disney Springs, just kind of walk around. And it's all about unwinding, I guess, that first day, right? Like I want to go to Disney Springs and listen to if they have a band playing in that little uh, amphitheater area outside of world of Disney that they have. It's just, it, there's so much cool stuff to do there and you can get a good bite to eat and just enjoy some food and just start to get in that Disney mood, you know, let all the real world troubles kind of, kind of go away and you're, you know, start getting in the Disney vibe. Yeah, that's a good point, John. And in fact, you know, I put like four things to do when I was putting this list together and, and have kind of like subsets of those things. Um, I don't, you know, even with annual pass, Traditionally, don't go into the park on the first day, right? So, you know, we get there. 
I have my first thing, relax at the resort, right? So check in and, and you said it and, and Jody said it is at four o'clock. So 10 to one, you get there in the morning, your room won't be ready. I always suggest bring a bag with some swimwear, some comfortable clothes in there. Cause you know, you're traveling. You want to get out of those traveling clothes unless you want to walk through the airport and, and swimwear. That's totally up to you. Look, you do you, the duck support you. Um, but bring those things, change, um, and then hang out at the resort, jump in the pool. If you're at the poly, awesome pool, right? Uh, but all the resorts have a pool, right? So hang out at the pool, um, or I put something here. How about you check out other resorts, right? So say if you're staying somewhere, you say, you know what? I want to do a Skyliner tour. So you drop your bags off. You go hop on a Skyliner. You can get to Riviera. You can get to Caribbean Beach, uh, Pop Century, uh, Art Animation. And like I said before, even though technically it's not a you know, a Skyliner resort, you can go out and hang around Boardwalk walk around so go check out the other resorts you might pick up something and say you know what i'm gonna stay here next time i come so uh you could do that or you can do a monorail tour you hop on at the polynesian you go to ttc go to grand floridian you know you swing through around magic kingdom you you know it passes through epcot right so you can see the you know at least get your first part of the or peek into epcot as it goes around and circle back out so there are a lot of things you could do on the first day. That's number one. Those things are free, right? You're already paying a lot to check in the resort, but just doing those things, you can do it with, with minimal cost to no cost um, just by, by just hanging out at your resort or doing a resort. <laughs> yeah. And Lonnie, you know, talking about like the resort tours and stuff, um, a lot of the resorts have scavenger hunts and things like that. If you go ask the front desk, uh, they'll they'll usually have something cool you can do like at Riviera, you know, you go around and look at the artwork and, and that type of thing. So it, that stuff's fun and it gets you to kind of walk around your resort and see the whole thing and take it in and learn where things are at. Um, so yeah, there's so much fun stuff you can do. Well, Jeff was just telling us about us in his short show that he did. Um, one of the times they did a Riviera or they did a Skyliner um, scavenger hunt that they got at one of the Skyliner resorts and that they said it was, it took a long time and they were, they were really into it. So that, again, that's a free activity. And if you, you know, but you're still moving around and doing stuff, but you are not necessarily going to a park. So that could be a fun first day activity. Yeah. And, and John, you said it, and I'm just going to piggyback on you on mine. A lot of times, and I've said it before, uh, and we're going to do it in 2025 when I hang out with team uh, Jody and Tim, Disney Springs. So we're checking in. We're usually we go in on Wednesday, right? And then you, you you're in the mix if it's race weekend. So marathon weekend coming, you go in on a Wednesday and boom, you're in it. You gotta you're running into packing package pickup and you this and that. And but we're gonna try something different because last time Gene and I spent the whole day, you know, at um the airport. Um, so we're not gonna do that. We're gonna fly in on Tuesday and we're gonna go to Disney Springs, right? So, you know, get a cookie from Gideon's. How about this? Book a table service if you want. You know, get you a nice meal. You know, you say you want to make a reservation at Art Smith's. Get that to start your carb loading up. Or you can do a quick service. Polite Pig, one of my favorites. You know, we, I try to have Polite Pig at least every time I go to Disney. I didn't have it last time, so I'm a little. I, I need a. I need a hookup. I need a Polite Pig hookup. So Disney Springs, you can go through there. You can pick up some merch. You can see some of the new things. Uh, so that's that's a big one for me. Gene, what about you? How are you going to spend your first day when you go to Disney World? Uh, well, it just depends on what kind of trip this is. In the past, uh, you know, most of my trip, uh, most of my trips, yeah, have been either run trips or cheer trips. And generally, uh, if it's a run trip, I'm doing what Lonnie tells me to do, which has been package pickup and expo and all that stuff. And um, for cheer, it's typically been um, we're trying to get there as early as possible, and we're going to get a park day in just because we don't have a lot of, you know, there's not a lot of time and our time is that first day. We, we know what to expect after that there's practices and things that we don't even know. There's times we've gone, we haven't even, you know, we've had tickets that we haven't been used. So that's kind of, you know, it, it's typically been uh, maybe an animal kingdom day where, where, you know, we can do a lot of the, uh, you know, a lot of what we want to do in that during that time period or something like that, or maybe um, we've done Hollywood studios that day. Um, <laughs> So Gene, again, when, you go just for, when you go for a cheer trip, so that first mm -hmm. day you're saying you, you need to go to the park. So then do you, based on how they 
perform, do you not know them like, oh, that you're, they're going to have a competition? Yeah, so we might not know. Yeah. yeah, we might not know. We might not know what time they're practicing. And so they might have practice in the middle of the day. And so they don't want them going to parks. They don't, and they'll tell you, you know, they, they, they say, this is not a Disney park trip. This is a Disney cheer trip. And so um, it's just the way it is. You, you, you risk, you know, you, you when you buy t the, your tickets, you're risking it, you know? That, yeah. Uh, you might not get to a park one day. And then also, you, you said this, based on how you perform, um, there's performances on Saturday and Sunday. And so on Saturday, most of the time we made it to Sunday. And so there's not a lot of park time if that happens. Mm -hmm. But if we've also had it the last time we went where we didn't make it to Sunday. And so we had all day. But typically you don't know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, so we're leaving. Saying, we're we're going run if it's a run one, you do what I say. If it's a cheer one, you do what Christy says. Well, and we're just doing uh, typically what the coaches are saying. So yeah, so I'm just being told what to do. <laughs> Every trip you're being told what to do. Okay. Yep. Just following the lead. That's a good way to go though, because there's so many choices to be made. It's nice sometimes to just have someone say, do this now. Yeah. There's so many right? times and so many things in my life that I have to be the one that makes the choices sometimes. It, yeah. That's I, actually, I, I love to, sit back and be told where we're going to eat. That's yeah. fine. Cause I, I, John, I'll eat anything. Look at me, bro. I eat right. Anything. No, Just I mean, tell where, tell where same, you know? same, you know, Lapu, uh, yeah. Lapu. I'm not going to have one, but Polly, oh. Polly, Oahu, Hohana, whatever. It doesn't matter. South America. I don't care. I'm game for it all. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's an excellent point. Man, that's my favorite thing about Gene. He doesn't care. I Man, he has a, 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 his taste palette is, is wide. Yeah. Oh boy. That's good. Yeah. Right. Fish, and, fish and chips, he'll he'll eat it. Hmm. As you should. Um, but we're not getting fish and chips on our first day because nobody's going into nope. the parks. No. Nope. So nope. Uh, yeah. So we're not gonna we're not gonna probably get fish and chips, but I mean we can always go to like you said, Lonnie, at, at Disney Springs, Cooks mm -hmm. of Dublin or Raglan Road. And we can get we can get our fish and chips there, even nice. if you're a, um, a gluten free fellow like myself, that you can get them there, which is amazing. Um, listen to some good bands. I mean, there's just so much fun stuff to do. Mm -hmm. One of the things, too, we were talking last episode about the Polynesian Tower and how it looks over a golf course. I, it wouldn't be bad to get in a twilight round of golf. I mean, I'm never going to be able to because all my kids would just yell at me uh, the whole time. But, you know, I would ideally I would love to do that. Get or there, you, unpack. Or you can take your, your kids with you and go do the you know miniature golf version. Mm -hmm. Go to Fantasia yeah, no. Gardens or the other. What's the other one? Um, Winter Summerland. Winter Summerland. There you go. That that would be really cool. And we keep saying every trip we say we want to do that because we love putt putt. We never do it, and I don't know Man, why. Bring them, destroy them, crush their dreams of winning. Teach them early yeah. that life is about disappointment. Don't give them a trophy. You just beat them and be like, I'm better than you and I can prove it and tell them something yeah. like, come back and challenge me when you think you can right. beat me. Just let them know. Well, that's why, that's the only reason why I can still tell my kids what to do at home because I can yeah. still beat them in a round of mini golf. Yeah, do you go? Whoever, whoever beats me gets that throne and then they're the alpha. That's mm -hmm. how it works. Yeah. That or mm -hmm. if they all gang up on you, put you off a cliff, and then as you're dangling, they throw you off and say something like long live the king. I don't know. You know. Yeah. They dig their claws into me and I'm yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. you know. Hey, but I got something else, John. Yeah, I, I've got another thing too. Oh, okay. <laughs> what else do you guys want? Um, you rent a car and enjoy the Orlando area, right? There's so much you can do outside of just Disney. I mean, there are great restaurants. Orlando is a great food scene. Um, so there are other restaurants. There are communities you can visit. I mean, hey, you can go to you know, some of these smaller towns around like you know, Winter Garden or um, and just kind of walk through some of their town squares and see the things out there. So, I mean, Orlando is more than Disney. I can't believe I'm saying that, but it's more than Disney. Right. So you can you can do other things around. There's some other there's some other theme parks, too. Right. Yeah, but we don't talk about them. One, one of the things that that's interesting you talk about getting a car. So um, one of the things that we've done in the past is we've had a car just that first day and I'll leave the kids and Tim at the resort 
to enjoy the amenities of the resort, go to the pool or, you know, do one of the scavenger hunts, run around, whatever they may want to do. And I'll take the car and go to the grocery store um, because we do like having some groceries on hand. Now there's plenty of places that will deliver groceries to you, but sometimes I, you know, sometimes you, it's nice to choose your own blueberries and bananas and such instead of having them delivered. You don't know what those substitutions are going to be like. Maybe, you know, I don't yeah. substitution sometimes. Yeah. Okay. I ordered a watermelon. I got a turnip. Like, all right. <laughs> no, not, are you serious? No, not really. No, you but, didn't. No, it didn't actually happen, but that I'm just saying that. I was it like, could happen. What do you say? It could happen. Good, good, good. So, so anyway, so that you know, we talked about you. You have access to your resort that day, whether your room is ready or not. So, you could go do all the really cool things at your resort. <clears throat> For example, Animal Kingdom Lodge, I think, is one of the best resorts to, uh, you know, spend a day without going into the parks. There's so much stuff going on there. Their community center has all sorts of crafts and cool things. There's people doing cultural things. There's, you know, you can go look at the animals. There's a great scavenger hunt. Um, and I like it because it's contained in one building uh, as opposed to some of the, you know, if you're going to talk DVC, they could be scattered around all the different buildings, but um, yeah, there's, there's a lot to do at your resort. So again, sometimes I drop off Tim and the kids and I'll go over into the grocery store, or sometimes we just go to the grocery store together and I get talked into buying some silly chips or snack or something that I would have never bought if they're all with me. So, um, but yeah. It's funny, I, like you, I, I, but I usually just place the R. But back to your point, there's so many choices. Uh, mm -hmm. But we did, I think Jean, Jean and I took a car one time and we went out mm -hmm. to the Publix and got some stuff too. And to your point, it's just, you know, it's 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 good to kind of walk around and and get some stuff that you want. Right. That, it, was, it seems like it was a long time ago. Uh, I think that was my first race, but um seems like there was a, a Disney, like a souvenir store. Either it's even a bunch of souvenirs in the Publix or there was a souvenir store next to, I don't know. But, but I also know yeah. that there are other places if you're going outside of the resorts to get Disney souvenirs that you pay a lot less than at Disney. Oh, yeah. There's a Walmart right by Disney that literally has like three rows full of Disney stuff. Yeah. So uh, it's a big Walmart. So, you know, but it's it's like a, the interstate. I mean, people are running in out there, but still. Actually, Kevin, Kevin has been on a grocery run with Tim and I before. We all landed around the same time. That was the year of the great illness of Marathon mm -hmm. 2023. We don't that speak of that. Terrible. It's we call um, those the dark times. Well, anyway, Kevin Kevin landed around the same time that we did, and we got a car service that drove us to the made a stop at the grocery first, and then drove us to the resort. So, um, but that's also you know, by the way, there are if you if you choose not to take an Uber, there are car services that will make a grocery stop for you if you want. So, that's and I wonder if that's where Kevin got sick and then gave it to me and Jean. Probably. I don't know. But though, I mean, that's a really great thing to do, though, that first day, because while you're doing some of the other exploring and stuff, you can be waiting for your delivery to come to your resort or, you know, like Jody said, kind of drive out and go. But I've always just had great success with Amazon Prime delivery from Whole Foods and Instacart at Disney. So that's what we do that first day, too, is order a bunch of food. But the other thing is there's arcades. And the movies at the park, like the movies out in the common areas that a lot of the resorts, you know, they have them on every other night or whatever it is. But if you figure out what nights your resort has that, that's a really cool thing to do your first night is to go to a resort that has just a movie. You can just kind of chill and lay in the grass and watch or the fake grass and watch the movie. It's super fun and it's free, you know, so the arcade, however, not free, but still fun. Like there is nothing better well, there's a few things, but not anything, nothing. It's very hard to beat beating your kid at air hockey. You know what I mean? Like just crushing them. It does start to stink when they become teenagers and they're more coordinated than you and they beat you. But you got to live that up while they're young. So I try to do that to my kids. I take them in there and play air hockey. And if I'm not winning 10 to nothing, uh, then I'm not trying hard enough. So, yeah. 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 Um... And Boardwalk is awesome for that too because they have that big green space right in the back, yeah, and yeah. they they play the movies back there, and kids run around. And you can sit on the grass and just kind of relax. 
And you can get a drink from Margarita Joe's or you can get some pizza at the Boardwalk Pizza Window and bring that over there. Um, so, yeah, that kind of stuff is so fun. Yeah. I always think it's fun your first day, in particular if it's a resort you've never stayed at before, to go explore the resort. Because there's always something – there's so many Disney hidden – things at each resort that you just aren't going to like when we stayed at Caribbean beach resort, it was just cool to walk all the way down to the one end and all the way back and see the different, um, you know, what are they all islands or whatever they're named, but to kind of see the scope of that resort. Cause it was so big. I mean, you just didn't, you know, have any perspective of it until you kind of walked around and checked it all out. So I do like to kind of walk around and, and see everything that first, that first day too. Yeah. And that way, you know where you're at, too. I mean, yeah. it's kind of like being on a cruise, right? Like once you get to know the ship, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. But it takes a little bit of just kind of exploring and checking things mm-hmm. out. And then you feel at home. Yeah. So, yeah. Important things are find the bus spot spot at your resort, because chances are you're going to be taking the bus to or from a, a park or two and find out where the quick service is at your resort. Because chances are you're going to be ordering mm-hmm. something at some point in time while you're there. Yep, exactly. All right. Well, that was Lonnie. Anybody do you have else? more thoughts? I got one more thing, and, I, and this cool. came up because I'm actually doing it when I um, for my next trip. And that is, if you're flying in and you get there that morning and have an opportunity to rest, why not attend an after hours event? Right. So, like, we're coming in and we're going to get there pretty early. I think we get there at about twelve. Uh, we're going to rest up, but then we're going to Mickey's very Merry Christmas party that night. Right. So you get all the benefits. You can do a whole day at a compressed because there's limited crowds. Right. So uh, I know Jody's going and she's doing uh, Mickey's not so scary. Right. So you can come yeah, in. You don't want to do what Team Benning is doing. No. Yeah. But that's Team that's, Benning yeah. is flying Team in that morning. Team, flying in that morning, going to pack it, pick up. Getting dressed for Mickey's not so scary Halloween costume or party in our scary costumes, going to the party, staying till closing. And then running the 5K, changing out of those costumes into our next costume. So we'll be in our resort for about two hours that first night. So, yeah, you don't want to do a team Lee, bidding. That, next. Oh, my gosh. I mean, we had to do that, and it wasn't fun. What are y'all even thinking? Yeah, yeah. I know. Wow. So don't well, do that. That is dedicated to the fun, right? Yeah. yeah. Two epic costumes. Two mm-hmm. epic costumes because at the Halloween party and the 5K. Here's the I thing. Have one, when you're dead. You can have two. I know. Yeah. So, so sure. think about that, right? You can get a whole day if there's an after hour event or a party. Maybe you can do that the day you arrive. <clears throat> yeah. Because what time do you get in for the parties? Four o'clock? Is that what it is? You, you can get, in at four. get in. Yeah. Yeah. And then the party doesn't start till seven. So you get those extra couple of hours where you get to be a regular park guest. And like you said, Lonnie, you can do a whole park in that amount of time. Yeah. Um, especially once they start kicking people out for the party. So. Oh yeah. So get your get your wristband and get ready to party. That's a great suggestion. Mm-hmm. All right, um, so that's fun. That's that's I love um, getting to Disney. It's just one of the best things in the world when you pull in and see that sign and oh, you just instantly feel the stress kind of melt away. And until the kids start screaming and throwing <laughs> things at you and demanding, you know, Mickey pretzels. Um, <laughs> but that's story for another episode. At this point, we will transition over to our favorite part of the show, which is quacking up with the ducks. So let's start with um, Gene. Can you make us quack up? I mean, I I don't know, but I'll try. So I was thinking about this the other day. I mean, you know, one of the things Spider-Man is known for a lot of things, but one of the things he's known for is sort of his witty banter. You know, he's really good at comebacks. Do Do you know why, though, he's really good at comebacks? No, why? Well, it's because with great power comes great response ability. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, boy. <laughs> Lonnie, can you top that? <laughs> Man, I probably can top that in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call a naughty lamb? Dress up like a skeleton on Halloween. I don't know. Bad to the bone. Oh. 
<laughs> That's for Jody's uh, two epic ha- Halloweens. Oh my! Yeah. All right, Jody, can you keep us cracking up? I'll try. Um, why was the robot couple's anniversary in the fall? Mm. Oh. They were autumn mated. Oh. <laughs> Terrible. I know. Uh, so you guys, I don't know if you guys know my friend, but my friend Marty, he owned a DeLorean. He, he drove it from time to time. <laughs> 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 oh boy. All right. Well, thanks everybody for listening. Um, if you feel the need to come over to our Facebook page or Facebook group, Disney with the ducks and tell us about what you like to do on your arrival day. You know, are there things that you like to do that we don't even know exist? Um, that kind of stuff would be great to share with the community. So please come over and do that. And then after you're done doing that, go give us a five-star review. Uh, we'd really appreciate that. And then if you want to share the episode with some friends who love Disney, even maybe some who don't, who just find, us to be the hilarious intelligent wonderful people that we are and just want to listen to us right um so if you could do that that would really help us out and with that i think gene you uh may want to tell these people something so that yeah i got you know as always i got with the lawyer so um the previous podcast episode was brought to you by disney with the ducks where john joey gene and lonnie took you through the ultimate walt disney world first day strategy whether you're a hit the ground running kind of family or someone who considers lounging by the pool an olympic event Side effects of listening to the previous episode may include planning your first day down to the minute, debating debating whether to head straight for Magic Kingdom or start slow with the resort day, and possibly rethinking your life if you don't be in your trip with a Mickey pretzel, um, a Dole Whip, or fish and chips in hand. Please note John's idea of a perfect first day is grabbing a Lapu Lapu at the Polynesian and watching fireworks from the beach. His strategy may lead to excessive relaxation and the realization that maybe the best rides are the ones with the best snacks. Jody will suggest making a detailed itinerary from, for every waking moment, ensuring you've wrote, dropped, and had lunch before most guests even know what ride queue they're in. Gene, of course, will claim that he has a foolproof first day plan, but it suspiciously, suspiciously sounds like something that was made up five minutes before the show started. <laughs> Expect stories of insider secrets, that involve accidentally discovering shortcuts through the parks while chasing down dole whips. And Lonnie, well, Lonnie will tell you to immediately head to the nearest churro cart and work your way around the park snack by snack. He may also suggest a nap because, of, as we've learned, Lonnie's first day energy level is about as reliable as Tomorrowland's people mover during a rainstorm. But remember, listening to this podcast may cause you to reconsider your entire approach to Disney vacations, and we take no responsibility for missed fast passes, spontaneous naps, or sudden urges to skip rope drop in favor of pool time. John will still insist his Lapu Lapu strategy is the best one. Gene's advice is questionable at best, and Lonnie's snack first approach will likely leave you full, but far from any actual rides. Plan your day wisely, but remember this, this is Walt Disney World, where the best plans always involve a little bit of magic and maybe a churro. Nice. Very good. The boys right. are fired. Quaharini, everybody. Where Bye, everybody. Bye, friends. He's like, I was dirty, but now I'm clean. <laughs>